thank you. Okay, so let's get Stephen Tuttle up here and ready to go. Um, Dr. Tuttle's a mechanical engineer. Look at him. Um, and he heads up the combustion and reacting transport section at the US Naval Research Laboratory or NRL. He's involved in a number of investigations covering a range of combustion and fire related topics, including crude oil, cool fire and spray combustion behavior and development of an emulsified crude oil spray burner for rapid disposal of emulsified crude oil. Um, so today he's gonna to be talking about development of that practical scale spray burner for emulsified crude oil spill remediation. Welcome Paul, or <laughs> Steve. All right, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, fan fantastic. <clears throat> yeah. Um, all right, thank you everybody for uh, for logging in, participating today. It's, we've had some really great uh, presentations already. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to thank uh, uh, BSEE, Vera Safety Environmental Enforcement for sponsoring this work and also um, uh, Chris or CJ Fitzner, who's gonna be presenting uh, later. <clears throat> so let's get into this. Okay. All right. So the motivation behind this is really to address some in situ burning shortfalls. Uh, first, um, incomplete combustion. Um, as you can see from these pictures, there's quite a bit of soot particles that are generated um, from these pool fires. Um, now this becomes a real problem for in situ burning in inland waters close to population centers. Uh, people, you know, the, the social and political impact is as important to consider with a lot of these cleanup efforts as, as the environmental. Um, the residual hydrocarbons in the soot and the residual crude on the, cur on the surface from incomplete burning is, you know, creates problems. Uh, the combustion problem is really it has to do with heat transfer to the water. Um, <clears throat> the the, the seawater or the, uh, the river water creates, you know, is this tremendous heat sink. And also the pure, poor fuel air mixing from the, um, from the slick. The away, just a minute. Um, and this is complicated by emulsified crude oil. Um, when the oil starts to emulsify from, from a benthic, benthic spill or wave mixing, it makes ignition and combustion that much more complicated. Um, our sort of workaround from this is to create a spray, geez, um, that isolates the droplet from the, from, the, um, from the ocean water and increases substantially the surface area of the crude oil. Um, instead of having a slick, you have this, you know, this dense spray that mixes rapidly with air. And so you have this much cleaner combustion process that you can see in this image on the far right. And this rapidly evaporates the crude oil droplet and then finally burns it off. Uh, spray combustion has, has some problems though. Um, there's the application barrier, if you will, with infrastructure support. The pump and air compression process um, can use a lot of energy. Um, uh, conventional spray on small vessels becomes a problem with trying to supply that pressure. And so we need to use a low pressure spray combustion process, um, especially if this is used in small vessels where you have intermittent capture and burn, capture and burn. So the technology that we've we've applied to this is what's called flow blurring atomization. It's a it's a low pressure atomization process that was developed for for highly viscous uh, liquids, and uh, it's a way to augment in situ burning, and with fairly low pressure. So we're operating from you know around 20 to 40 psi gauge uh, with both the air and the liquid across the nozzle exit, and we can create very large nozzles as well. So uh, orifice exit sizes, we started off at one eighth of an inch and now we're operating at, at, at one full inch. So it, it can tolerate all sorts of obstructions and, and big blobs of crude oil. 
as it pass through, passes through the system. Um, <clears throat> within engineering development process, we've gone through concept demonstration and concept development, and I can provide papers that um, talk about some of that. Right now we're in the system development process. And uh, what I wanna to talk today about is the measurement of the emissions and the wave motion influence. Uh, we're going through the glow torch ignition sort of VNV uh, validation and verification process. And we'll be testing actual debris particles through the spray system. So those, those, that is work that is coming up in, in a later, later presentations. So the atomizer is pretty large, pretty simple. Uh, as far as intellectual property, this is open source. Um, and I can provide diagrams and cross sections with dimensions and even you know, academic papers for those that are interested. Um, uh, so there's, there's not a whole lot there. It's, you've got air coming up through the outside, oil up the center, and the air creates this rapid mixing and shear section region that, that atomizes the oil to fairly fine uh, sprays. Um, the combustor design is also open source intellectual property. Um, it can't really be patented, in fact, because the design approach that we use is really what I've adapted from gas turbine engine combustor design, where you have uh, multiple steps uh, in, the, in the gas flow that creates these recirculation zones that, in the, that bring back hot products upstream and help evaporate and burn. Um, <clears throat> the duct wall itself also reflects a great deal of heat back to the burning plume to evap evaporate the oil and catches any sort of lateral spray droplets. Uh, this dilution air then also passes through those, those holes in this in this shroud. And uh, the shroud gets quite hot so that as the air passes through, it, it heats up and that helps also assist in the evaporation and burning process. Uh, this diagram right here shows four sections that we've discovered over time that we can operate very stable and clean burning with just two sections. The uh, extra two sections are actually, they inhibit uh, in the entrainment of air and mixing with a plume and actually makes a dirtier flame. So short and sweet. Uh, Multi-scale modular sections. Um, sort of the full scale is um, 25 by 24 by 24 in the first section, 32 inches by 32 inches in the next section. Um, the full scale burner, which we haven't we haven't burned. Uh, actually built yet. We're, we're, we're still testing that, that half scale burner uh, is double the size. Um, but as we've discovered with each increment in, in size that the, the larger we build it, the, uh, the better it performs. Uh, it's just, there's more spray plume burning at any given moment to transfer heat um, back, to the, back to the cold plume. So again, we've got this low pressure atomizer abrupt expansions reflective walls with the dilution holes. So here's a test article just before. It's all nice and shiny and clean before we test it. It's so pretty. Um, after some testing, you can see um, this is, this is a, a, a quarter scale burner. We can see it's, it's actually quite clean. And at 25% and 50% emulsion, it, it uh, still burns just fine. 50% uh, has some problems, but the 25% the actually it burns really nice. Uh, I want to give a little bit of a discussion on the system application and layout. Um, placing a burner like this on a ship or a vessel is something that um, I'm sure a lot of people are going to have, um, you know, take pause. Uh, so the idea is to place the burner on a barge and then um, feed that barge with, from a ship or, or another barge that uh, provides any sort of electrical power for the ignition torch, uh, diesel air compressor, and the uh, diesel hydraulic pump that drives the crude oil um, from either a bladder or a skimmer. So pretty simple layout here. Uh, current oil flow rates, flow rates that we've been, we've been exercising right now, 
um, with the 50% scale, there's the one inch diameter uh, atomizer exit. So full, full airflow is 232 standard cubic feet per minute and um, 4.8 gallons per minute, uh, which adds up quite a bit if you're operating for 24 hours a day or even eight hours over a day. Um, to increase the flow capacity, we increase the size um, or add multiple burners um, to, to scale it for, for practical use. Um, the airflow infrastructure is, is an engineering aspect that um, really needs to be, uh, you know, as, as this moves closer to, um, to transition, needs to be worked on. And uh, there's a possibility of using blowers or uh, low, pressure, low pressure compressors um, that would be a lot more efficient than, say, current experimental uh, layout where we have a compressor that pumps the air up to around 125 PSI. We run it through a Venturi to measure the airflow. If it was just pumped at, you know, the 20 to 40 PSI gauge pressure that we use, we'd it'd use a lot less power. Um, application targets are uh, three main areas. First, a remote spill location where the spill or the wreck is sufficiently far from a port so that the cost and the carbon footprint is greater than burning on site. So if you have to ship oil that you've cleaned up from a site, I mean, you may actually burn more carbon than you'll actually uh, capture from cleaning up the oil. Um, applications such as Arctic conditions, so remote islands, as well as ice encased in oil that can be freed by the burner heat. Uh, another application is inland waters where um, near population centers where the in-situ burning is just, it's too dirty and it's, it's wouldn't be acceptable. And the spill volume is overwhelming the transportation and uh, the spill volume is endangering local waterways and fisheries as well as recreational areas. Um, so two principles application approaches, individual small vessels, um, so issues with that are operator training, oil preparation and safety. Um, <clears throat> the other idea is use small vessels to capture oil, transport to a larger, larger vessel for burning where there's single and multiple burners, uh, that there's, there's the compressor and pump infrastructure, and um, we can really scale the burn rate to the capture rate, and you'll have the um, sort of the mechanical infrastructure to decant the seawater from the captured liquid, so you have cleaner burning and more... Uh, more stable burning um, disposal. So let's talk a little bit about emissions. Uh, we did emissions with, uh, in collaboration with Dr. Brian Gallet from the US EPA um, and Dr. Johanna Arell from the University of Dayton Research Institute. Um, <clears throat> we did this at our facility in North Beach, Maryland, uh, Chesapeake Beach, Maryland. Um, it's right on the coast of the of Chesapeake Bay and uh, where we do large, large burn testing for, for the US Navy for all sorts of different activities. Uh, we placed the instrumentation in a large boom. Uh, CJ was our boom operator. I ran the burner and uh, Brian Gallette and his team, um, look, they monitored the instrumentation to make sure you can see from, oh, let's see. We had a video there. Let's see if we can play this. You can see from the burner pictures, it's it's actually really quite clean. Uh, the mean combustion efficiency was around 99.9%. Very clean. Uh, and the soot peaked around, around 40 grams per kilogram for the emulsified hoops, which is our lowest, uh, I'm sorry, our highest soot um, emitter. Uh, the test series. So it was, we were really pleased with um, uh, the results. Uh, we'd measured soot before um, and we were, had pretty low, low soot emissions, but the mean combustion uh, efficiency we hadn't measured in, in the before at all. And we, um, the turbulent mixing, the high speed mixing really ensures that the oil mixes out and burns well. Uh, wave testing, we, pre we performed at OMSET. We had a big team of people 
from Omset, um, as well as Subsalve that provided the barge, the pump, and the compressor system. We, we were just testing spray, so it was a cold spray test. Um, so many thanks to Omset and Subsalve, as well as Essam, and uh, Karen Stone and Paul Meyer from Bessie. And uh, we wanted to see if, as this spray rocked back and forth, whether the spray would impinge with the wall. We found that it didn't at all. Uh, the, the spray was just a lot, moved much, much faster than the, than the rocking motion of the, uh, of the barge. So really great results with that aspect. Um, so the next stage is uh, we've got glow torch ignition verification. So we've been using a torch system um, and it has some verification processes that we're going through to make sure that it will light emulsified crude um, if, uh, effectively and reliably uh, without <clears throat> a lot of problems. And we're still working through that. And then, and then, after, and then we've also got the debris particle burning that we're going to be testing. So a big question is, um, a lot of the pumps, they macerate debris, and we need to figure out comp and compare what particle sizes will actually burn completely in the plume um, and compare that with the particle size uh, distribution that's generated from the, the pump, you know, upstream pump systems, uh, because those systems do capture a lot of debris. Um, and the time is yours for, um, for questions. Thank you so much. I think we are. I think we've got five minutes for questions. Yeah, you got us. You got us all caught up. Um, thanks, Stephen. That was again an excellent presentation. Um, Thank you, Lindsay. Questions for Stephen? Yes, there is one question. Uh -huh. Have there been efforts to date, efforts to date, to train oil spill response organization personnel to use this burner? Uh, not yet. No, we have a discussion coming up with a group on how this, how this might be deployed and employed, uh, how it might be used. So that is a working progress, but, but great question, yes. No more open questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so thank, much. Thank you, Stephen. 